this is funny because it's talking about DJs. It seems like in my, from what I've seen, observing from the outside, looking in from afar, let's say, DJs and comedians are doing everything in their power, right, to ensure that we are in some sort of restricted fashion of living, some sort of restricted lockdown, restricted mo movement, um, whatever it may be, uh, for a prolonged period of time. Like, the DJs and comedians are going to make sure that we're in some sort of lockdown until 2025, I swear to God. And it's funny that most of the people who are performing who are out there touring out there doing their bits and pieces are the people that you probably wouldn't see if the world was back to normal anyway don't you find that ironic don't you find that really funny that the people who probably shouldn't be out there no the people that probably shouldn't be out there are out there and the people that should be out there are not out there how odd is that it's really bizarre and again think of the people that would want to go right during a global pandemic to go see Brennan Shaw do stand-up comedy, right? This is him doing the advert, obviously, on his Instagram, showing it, saying San Marcos, Texas. He's in there from, he's on there, he's there, sorry, in there, on there, uh, from January 29th to the 30th. Two thick-ass nights, of course, but the thick way to join in with his brand. Tickets go on set 8 a.m. PST this Thursday. And it's like, who would be the person that would leave their home, their humble abode, um, leave their wife and children during this really scary time to go and see Brendan Shaw do stand up. Like you would maybe go and see one of the legends, right? The Chappelle's, the Chris Rocks, the Bill Burr's and stuff, maybe, right? That might be an occasion to go. But to go out of your way to go see Brendan Shaw show in Texas is insane. Legitimately one of the most insane things. And then to top that up, if that wasn't enough, you've got this tweet here from Business Tesno showing. I don't know who these people are. I've never seen these names in my entire life, right? Business Texano uh, posting a video clip of somebody called Felipe Touchman, Tuchman, and Derek Barbol Barbola, Derek Barbola on November 2020 playing in Tulum, Mexico. And Tulum, Mexico seems to be the next uh, free location to go and DJ and play at. I think if you're wondering, yeah, I think if you're sat at home thinking, hey, where, where in the world are they not taking COVID seriously? Um, and does it look like, you know, the population are sort of being left to their own devices <laughs> and it's sort of like sink or swim territory. Just look at any DJ or comedians itinerary or, you know, set, no, uh, dates on their website where they're performing and you definitely spot the locations where it's a bit sketchy places that you probably should avoid for the foreseeable future, Colombia, Mexico. Um, now it's India I'm assuming I've seen people announce dates that they're going to play in India and perform in India and a few other spots are popping up of course the Middle East UAE, UAE. Um, I've seen someone perform in Oman I've seen some play people go to Egypt these are the places that everyone's going to because they're the places where for the most part the tourism uh, department or tourism board are like look we need tourists here we don't usually get them anyway or sometimes we do and this is always usually our business season we don't care we want these gringos on our shores partying and dancing and drinking our diluted drinks let's get it going and this is uh, Felipe Tuckman and Derek Balboa playing somewhere in Tolu, Mexico and it looks like one of the again it's, it's, it's always difficult to capture parties on video anyway right it's just hard that's why people should give Boiler Room a lot more credit than they then they do then they yeah, people should give a lot more more credit right because especially in the beginning when they used to do some of the parties and you know you see some of the boiler room parties in berlin some of the ones in early ones in london like they were able to capture the vibe the electricity the set the touch the smell the, the just the vibrations of people dancing around each other really well on video which is difficult to do, especially if you're just filming it from flipping gopro or something right in the early days but it's just hard just in general to do but sometimes you see a video and you're like, you know what? That looks like a shit party. And this looks like a very, very shit party. So imagine leaving your home to go to Tolu, Mexico, to go and see these two guys, Felipe Tuckman and Derek Barbola, who might be really great, amazing dudes, but really and truly, there's, you know, I'm sure in on any other in on any other year right outside of covid you could probably see these guys playing at a host of really amazing sensational locations right probably every other weekend imagine leaving your home to go see them play in Tolu, mexico like this if i don't get caught for this let me make sure i Put it off and on the, the sound so I don't get flipping um, 
taken down because you know these videos and stuff are always annoying like that but look at that it just looks so dead the first thing you do when you play somewhere where you can smoke behind the decks is smoke behind the decks of course Jesus Christ guys wearing those dumb hats some sort of fist bump i don't know what that is fist pumping it looks like it but it's a bit of a sorry excuse for it so you see that happening and then you see another uh person out there again it kind of reminded me a little bit how dead this video was this epic video do you remember this earlier in the year um this person tweeted it on twitter it said i hope business techno is finished forever because of this crisis nina kravis here playing a playgrave in italy to a bunch of people who aren't interested in dancing weird vibe it's not really interested in dancing it's just a different scene right you see this often i think if you see videos of um what's that place called is it Kappa Futura or something it's that festival that's sort of taking place in some weird structure that looks like a um a sort of shelter that where you put buses in or maybe like a market thing it's a really crazy um location it looks amazing to, to view via video especially when the video is pointing at the back of the dj kind of looking outwards right you see a lot of those videos and you see a lot of the punters dancing at the front or even to the sides and they're hardly dancing if anything they're like nodding whispering into each other's ears all got sunglasses on you know just doing a little side two-step but they're not really going for it you don't see people actually you know losing their minds it's not really a thing of course, this video is worse because you see Nina Kravitz, um, you know, doing her thing in all her glory. And she's just overlooking a bunch of people who are just staring at her like they're at a gig. It's really utterly bizarre. When I saw it at the time, I was like, this is so odd. Um, and it's even odder now looking back at it. But it's just, you know, a reflection of the times, really, because if you're a plague ravey business techno -y dj um you're probably going to be going around chasing the bag chasing the gigs and you're probably not going to be playing at the most um uh let's say uh, rave friendly locations right it's usually going to be playing in front of a, a client base who are just more interested in you being there and taking pictures with you or taking pictures of themselves being at the place as opposed to actually partying but let's look at this video <laughs> dancing as she does and look that's a big drop right in a really you know on a really decent tune right and look at this crowd nothing from them absolutely nothing phones everywhere this let's go back that's a good ref that's a good reflection of how bad the rave is there's a there's what looks like a professional videographer there right whether or not he's using a smartphone doesn't matter but there's somebody obviously there who's in charge of capturing the event in some way shape or form and there's somebody in front of them with their own phone in frame right so there's a picture within a picture capturing the dear people dancing and there's people shining lights back on them it's just a perfect amalgamation of absolute madness <laughs> They're not moving and again this is me playing it right i'm keep pausing but they're not moving an inch you still got the front of the row here and they're just staring back at her like there's not even a hint of movement look at them look my man just looking at her like nothing's going on like oh i'm just looking staring back staring back so again odd 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 doesn't really make any sense who knows what's going on there and then to cap it off um You've got this really funny video, which kind of just made me lols. And um, this is from, you know, a, a page that I follow that I'm really a big fan of because obviously it covers um, most of the Intervision crew and what they get up to. Um, but this year has been a bit disappointing because obviously, you know, I, I, I'm a big fan of Dixon and then what he's obviously done with Intervision and, and the kind of DJs he sort of brought through and his aesthetic and his perspective on music and his approach to DJ. I'm just a big fan of him personally. So to see him going out during the year and playing all these play rooms, not all of these, he played a couple. It was a bit like, oh, to take it. Like, Jesus, what it, it is what it is. And I guess he has to pay for his kids' private school. People have to do what they have to do. But then you have this video that showed up recently um, showcasing uh, Dennis Horvat, Nina Kravitz playing um, in an event called Rack that it looks like it took place in the UAE, right? In the middle of the desert, legitimately in the middle of the desert. Um, and it looks horrible because essentially what they've done is that they've sort of, you know, provided a little DJ booth that he's to play in and all the punters are essentially dancing in what I would describe as hula hoops. I'm not sure. There might be something different. It might be like, you know, markings on the floor, but to me, they look like hula hoops placed on the floor 
of place on the sand and then the reveler has to dance within it and they're sort of like i'm assuming spaced out six meters between each other and again because it's in the open air there's this understanding that you can probably fit more people in there and they're all dancing and essentially trying to recreate the rave uh, atmosphere in the middle of a desert so i'll play the video for you now to so you can see it and if you're listening just listen of course but look how weird that is like and again i'm not sure these deeds like no one's counting people's pockets right i don't think that's fair but I wonder, I wonder what the, what the, what the um, rationale would be to, <sighs> hmm, what rationale, I wonder how you would explain your, this to yourself, like, you know, you get into DJ, especially at that kind of level, in a vision, right, you're playing at some really, you know, um, you're playing at some very well regarded places, you're held up in, you know, in good esteem in the industry, people seem to respect you, and if they're sort of like a weird label where they sort of have a really big mainstream following and also a very big underground following, they kind of balance it really well. If you read, read or listen to a lot of Dixon interviews, you could understand a lot of work goes into it behind the scenes to ensure that balance it gets kept right he kind of maybe tipped on one side when he did the old gta thing but he sort of kept it in line and of course the ib for residency kind of did help to tip it again but he's kept pulling it back again so there by doing all the um lost in sound parties and all this malarkey so there are things that they do that they're very particular about but i cannot i can't imagine this being a thing that you know they would want to do it might just be like a need like hey this is what it is you know i have high because i whenever i see somebody playing these sort of things especially the more affluent djs or people who not let's say affluent because we can't count people's pockets but let's say they're djs who you would assume get booked quite often outside of you know post no pre-pandemic they were probably getting booked all the time whenever i see people like that playing in most of these events i always think to myself they're definitely out mostly i would assume they're doing it because they need the money like you know they're, they're even though they have a lot of gigs their monthly expenses are so high that they need to ensure that they have a constant flow of gigs coming in to allow them to sort of keep their head above water and the moment those gigs stop it really hurts their ability to just live i would assume that would be the case if not leaving my apartment in you know zurich berlin uh brussels amsterdam to go and play a gig in the middle of the uae with people standing in hula hoops would definitely not be the way i'll be spending my lockdown look how terrible that looks honestly look how terrible that looks genuinely that isn't a party what is that like what is that that, that looks like one of those you know those sort of like team building exercises you go on when you've just joined, when you've joined a company like they go on these yearly retreats and you go out and you sort of do this weird game thing and they hire some shitty dj that they found on flipping i don't know um the yellow pages back in the day and you kind of have to pretend that you guys are having fun when you all kind of want to get out there and go to the nearest bar and get wasted that's what it sort of looks like but you know middle of the desert you can't exactly escape anyway next slide here you got again him playing of course he's got the great fun on the headphones so i'll give him credit on that one this looks objectively terrible. Look at it. Comedians and DJs will do anything for the bag. Like you could legit that's 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 the thing that I think about it. You could legitimately pay a DJ to play in your toilet for enough money. Like they would do it. Like if you gave if you gave a DJ ten grand and said, Hey, play my toilet while I take a shit, they would definitely do it. Like there's no gig that they would say no to. It seems like my somebody's <laughs> Video here and then again that just looks of course you've got people here breaking the rules you've got this girl in in between running in between hoops it's just like i'd love to interview some of the people that are actually event attending these events like what brought you here like are you part of like a foreign um government um does your parent do your parents work in politics or banking are you just an influencer that got you know um hit up by somebody from the uae tourism board to come down and sort of bolster their image what exactly brought you here i'd love to know jesus christ you've seen these faces all the time how many how many of these videos have you seen of these raves where you've seen these sort of like quasi 
hot girl raver types like they exist everywhere especially on these meme pages that they collect all these rave footages you see all these like sort of like scantily clad girls in you know perfectly adjusted breastless dancing next to a dj and sort of like make it look like a good time it's like i guess it's quite cool i guess if you're like the if you're like the daughter of a foreign diplomat or of a you know oil tycoon or something you could be doing worse things right you just be hanging around djs um pretending you're an intern um and just living a life in it and documenting it on your social media platforms there could be worse things you could be doing another slide again who do we see here nina kravis of course who would do legitimately anything anything for the check it seems like it's just absolutely obscene why does somebody of her level of her notoriety of her esteem and industry need to play again not need because again you can't get people's pockets but it's really bizarre isn't it really bizarre <laughs> Yeah, she playing a bit of a desert, trying to make it fun. Or maybe, maybe it's not even that much of an issue. Maybe it's just like an an individual oligarch or some an oligarch of some sort deciding to just throw a party in the middle of the UAE. That could be also the case because I'm thinking it's actually a an event program or a booker that put this thing together. It might just be an oligarch. I said, you know what, I'm bored. I'm going to fly out some friends, a couple of hot girls, a couple of good DJs who I know, who, who he, they know personally, and just put on a party. That could be the case, but it doesn't look like, it looks like this is an event that they sold tickets to, two people to go and attend. Another video again, her dancing. It, it, I guess it's quite swag, you know? dressed in designer clothing dancing in the middle of a uae desert drinking some wine you know that's a swag bit i think of the djs there's some swag involved there but god almighty man and it gets quite cold in the desert when this when, when yeah right when the sun sets it gets quite cold right i'm assuming the, the temperatures sort of like uh swing wildly on both ends <laughs> I can't imagine the worst place to be, honestly, I really can't. <sighs> I don't know, man. So yeah, DJs will do anything for the cash and it looks like ravers will go anywhere for the rave. It's like a match, a match, match made in absolute heaven, mate. Absolute heaven. Um, I question everything about it. I don't really know what's going on there. But again, we're not there. We're here. So we don't have to worry about it, I guess, in all some extent.